Welcome to Community Concerts at Seconds, 34th season of world-class music, free to all. Serving our hometown of Baltimore, as well as the wider region, through live and digital events, the series is presented at Second Presbyterian Church and was founded by Margaret Budd in 1987. Community Concerts at Second is an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission is to enrich our community by presenting free professional musical performances of lasting artistic value. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here and coming with us to share in this program virtually, at least. We're really glad that we can make this happen and record these pieces for you uh, in lieu of the concert that we're supposed to have this season. But we're very excited to joining you next season live in person. So my name is Jeff Stern. I'm one of the percussionists with Two Piano, Two Percussion Group, Icarus Quartet. And I am local to Baltimore, uh, teach at Peabody, uh, along with the other percussionists in the group, Matt Cowan. And we have pianists Yevgeny Yantov and Larry Wing. So one of the reasons we were really excited about this program is a new, uh, a new channel that we launched through Icarus Quartet, which was a call for scores and somewhat of a competition that we did in response to the uh, coronavirus pandemic. And we've had a lot of fun with it, and it's going to be something that we're going to take forward uh, every year from now on. So we asked uh, student composers everywhere to submit scores uh, of chamber works to us, and we looked through them to see who we could possibly work with uh, in coming together to make a new piece specifically for our group. And so we got a lot of really exciting and impressive, unique voices that uh, a lot of whom we had never heard or knew of before. And we feel very fortunate to have one of these uh, composers with us today. So this is Stephen Downing. And he came up from North Carolina, uh, from Duke University, where you're doing your doctorate, is that right? Yep, PhD candidate now. Yep. Awesome. So he's very smart. He's about to uh, be a scholar in the field of music. But um, do you want to tell us actually a little bit about your background and what brought you to this point? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a percussionist first. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in percussion performance. Um, but the whole time I was in school, I was composing kind of on the side. Then as I was finishing up my performance degree, I realized I would kind of rather shift towards composition as a profession. Um, so I applied for a few programs. Got into Duke's PhD program. I've been there for three years, kind of owning my craft, I guess. Um, <laughs> sort of uh, developing a sort of compositional style and have two years left and then we'll see you from there. Very cool. Yeah, well, we were, I mean, we were really happy to see your music and hear your music. And we found out through the process that you had written for some people that we know already. And uh, your voice just like really paired with our kind of aesthetic and what, yeah. we, already, uh, what we already had been used to doing. So uh, obviously you're a percussionist, so you have experience writing for, for our instruments in some way. Ha have you written much for piano as well? I have a handful of piano pieces, yeah. I, I like to write for percussion, piano, strings, instruments like that. Yeah. Instruments with some strong attacks, because I like that you know, beat-driven rhythmic music. The, the relationship and the, the kind of timeline that we did after you were kind of announced as one of our winners, I think is pretty representative of the normal collaboration that we would have with a lot of the professional composers uh, that we work with. How was this for you in terms of uh, a normal, or compared to your normal process of writing uh, leading up from conception to eventual performance? This has been a super great opportunity, um, the way the timeline has worked out, because as a student composer, typically, as I'm writing a piece, um, once it's performed or recorded, that's kind of the end of it. I send in one version, the ensemble records it, and that's the end. But with you guys, the version that we're recording is really the second or third final version, which has been really nice to adapt the piece as it goes along. You being here even allowed some further collaboration, yeah. being in the hall and being able to change some octaves and little things like that, yeah. that I think it really made a, a big dif difference. Yeah, 
It's a great piece now, I think. Oh, yeah. Much better than it was in <laughs> August. Yeah. So this piece is called The Sky, Paler Than Yesterday. Yeah. What, what does that title mean for you? Um, so that title comes from a Lawrence Robb poem. Um, and I find his poetry very evocative, especially that line specifically, because this piece is about memory. Um, it's about how things change over time, how your perspective on things change with, uh, when you're given new information. So in the piece, this kind of shows itself by, we have sort of this textural material at the beginning for a couple of minutes. Um, we sort of go on a journey through several different um, evolutionary sections in some ways. And then as we return to the end of the piece in the last couple of minutes, we return to that beginning material. But based on the material that we found in the middle, our new context has been formed for what we've already heard. So it kind of should be reminiscent of what you've heard, this sort of dark material, but something has happened in the middle that makes us feel different, even though we're hearing some very similar stuff. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your incredible music. And again, welcome. And I hope you enjoy this world premiere recording and presentation of Stephen Downing's The Sky Paler Than Yesterday.
Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Cowan. I'm the other percussionist for Icarus Quartet, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Yang Wang's piece, Unread. This next piece on the program is the other work that we commissioned through our call for scores titled IQ Tests. That program led us to Stephen Downing's piece as well as Yang's piece. And we're really thrilled to be sharing this uh, world premiere performance with you today. One of the things that makes this piece so incredible is the idea of delivering messages that weren't previously heard. So you will hear Morse code being played by uh, clicks triggered by the synthesizer, as well as on the actual acoustic instruments. And these are messages that have been translated or hidden through Morse code. Uh, in a live performance of the piece, how this works is the audience will actually text in things to a certain number, and that will project to us to be able to play, which is going to be amazing. So the audience gets to interact in the piece. In this recorded version, what we did is we reached out to our friends at the concert series and asked them for a quote that we could use and translate into Morse code. And then we also put a quote in of our own. So what they came back to us with was a quote from a poem by Lucille Clifton that goes, I beg my bones to be good, but they keep clicking music. And then the quote that we added inside the piece is by John Cage. And this one goes, I can't understand why people are frightened of new ideas. I'm frightened of the old ones. So we hope you enjoy. This is Unread by Yang Wong. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching the first part of the concert. Intermission will last just a few minutes. During this time, Community Concerts at Second would like to thank our advertisers, many of whom have supported us for decades. The last piece on the program today is called Sleep and Play by an old friend of ours, Lilia Ugai. We were actually in school together with Lilia many years ago, and it's been great to work with her through this process and to make this new piece. Uh, Sleep and Play is actually part of a series of pieces that she wrote based on motherhood around the time that she was having her, her first child. So uh, we are extremely excited to share this with you today, and it's kind of a fun piece that is also just based in great composition. So we have some, some instruments that you'll see in this, and it's primarily using baby toys. So Jeff has uh, an assortment of instruments back here to show. And most of those were actually toys that Lilia sent us that, were, that belonged to her, to her child. And when she was writing the piece, she was playing around with these toys with her child. And so she sent the actual toys, which were the actual sounds that she was working with, up to us to use. And there's one special one over here called the roly-poly doll that we'll show you as well. That's going to make a special appearance. You'll, you'll see it. And then the other instrument that's kind of out of the norm for our ensemble is the toy piano. And Yevgeny can show you what that's going to sound like. In this ensemble, there are two mama instruments, the big piano and the big vibraphone, and two of the baby instruments of the same thing, the glockenspiel and the toy piano. So, it's a fun piece, and we hope you enjoy Sleep and Play by Lilia Ugai.